Hey guys, this is gonna be a really short video about some ZBrush tips. We're gonna look at the good old transpose tool and some little tricks that you can do with it, the movie timeline and wireframe. Let's do it. Hey guys, it's Serge from Sergeworks. We're gonna make it short and sweet. As if there's not that many of them already out there. But hey, let's dive right into it. So uh, the first one is the good old transpose tool. So usually how you approach it, so you mask the area of interest and then let's say you then rotate right then you want to mask some more you rotate etc now the way I sometimes do it I do it this way as well but there is uh, a faster way if you don't need maybe um, for it to be super precise or maybe if you want the rotation to be quite subtle so you still need to make a mask but what you do is so you create a mask like so right i'm only interested interested in this one finger for the moment and now instead of my pivot point being at the bottom as it used to be my top circle becomes a pivot point and what i mean by that is now when i hold alt and rotate as you can see it's my pivot point and i don't have any mask at the bottom the great thing about it, I then can can continue putting my uh, transpose tool, pressing Alt, and without the mask again. So just readjusting my pivot point, position here, so you can see how qu quickly you can do these changes without the mask. So I'm not sure if many people use it, but uh, I use it. Uh, quite a lot obviously broke the finger but that's not the point okay so that was uh, tip number one all right so ZBrush tip number two I've dug out the old chimp model uh, that I've got so usually when you switch on your wireframe zone so it shows you the subdivided level of the wireframes but uh, very often I want to see the low res cage so to do that uh, what you need to do so you need to go to level one and then turn off the wireframes and turn it back on and then go all the way back up and now you can see that I've got my low res cage on top of the subdivided mesh now obviously if at this stage I will switch off and switch it back on it will go back to being subdivided so yeah all you need to do is turn it off go to level 1 turn it back on and go all the way up that's all now ZBrush tip number three, this is concerning uh, the movie timeline. So I find it quite useful if you're uh, sculpting the model and you're using Spotlight with a reference on the background. So let's say you just turn on your uh, let's dock the movie panel here. Uh, let's pretend I've got a chimp reference on the background and I have lined it up carefully and I'm sculpting from the front view. So in the timeline submenu here, what I need to do is uh, just click on the show. It shows me the timeline and I want to remember this view. So all I need to do is just click once on the timeline. Uh, as you can see, there is this little dot there. So now if I'll go around and do like extra sculpting and whatnot, whenever I want to go back and readjust something in my view, I just need to drag this little bar here at the bottom and it snaps back to the front view. Now I can continue and creating uh, you know, uh, different views and maybe I'll click next in here maybe I'll do one here, etc. But yeah, now it just remembers the side view, the back view, front view so I find it quite helpful. So on that note, uh, the movie if anybody wants to create a movie by the way, if I want to remove these points you just left click, hold and drag, drag them off the timeline so you can do so in ZBrush let me turn off the wireframes. So let's say I start off with this three-quarter view and just left click on the timeline. Then I want to zoom in maybe and show off his eyes or whatever. So I do that. I'm not going to create a long um, sequence because I want to show uh, many things with it. So here it is, the little video. So now if you want to play this video, you just need to press um, hold shift on press on this little bar and here's the video plays now let's say you want to share it with your friends and whatnot and you want to export this movie 
First, what you want to make sure is that you record just the document. So in the left hand side here, just engage the document, switch to large, and also in overlay image and title image, just remove all of these logos and titles, just switch it all to zero. Okay, so once you've done that and you've got your little video, what you need to do is uh, hold shift and control this time together and click on this bar. So now it pre-records uh, all the frames. Now you can see the play movie is available, available now. So if I hit that, we've got the little movie. So if you obviously want to export, you just uh, press H for high quality and then export your uh, ZBrush movie file. So this is that. Now if you want to take it uh, another step further, let me just delete this movie. And maybe if you want to use the ZBrush inbuilt uh, render engine, uh, BPR. So what you need to do is, let me just make sure I don't have any uh, fancy things. I'll just remove the details. So it's actually nice and quick. Uh, okay, let's, let's keep the shadow so we actually see that there's something there. So now if I've hit BPR, it takes some time, right? Now, once you've done that once, at this stage, you can hold shift and control and click on the bar. So now it remembers, hey, now I need to do the BPR render and will it will go through the sequence in this mode. So we're not gonna wait for the whole sequence. You can see uh, the point, we'll just hit escape. Now, if I play the movie now, you can see the beginning of this movie is actually with the shadows. I just didn't finish the whole export. So yeah, you can do that. You can set up your lights and do the nice fancy uh, settings. Uh, and you can actually do some nice movies inside of ZBrush and, and renders. So I hope that uh, was helpful as well. Uh, this is all I wanted to share with you today, guys. And if you find it useful, please let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, have a great day. Bye-bye.